speak the blessing of God and the church upon your marriage. I invite you, therefore, to promise with the help of God to fulfill the obligations which Christian marriage demands. Catherine, will you continue to have this man to be your husband to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you, will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? <laughs> he does. <laughs> Will you continue to have this woman to be your wife to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. <laughs> well, all of you witnessing these promises do all of you power to uphold these two persons in their marriage. We, we will. will. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and ever living God, you have created us male and female in your image. Look mercifully upon this man and this woman who come to you seeking your blessing and assist them with your grace that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they renew through Jesus Christ our Savior who lives and reigns with you in the, Holy, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Lauren. Yes. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him in this love. Not that we are loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in the love of God and in God, God abides in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I'm happy to help him up. <laughs> In the movie, The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy and her new friends are seeking out the wizard to solve all their problems. And so they follow the yellow brick road and they come to the city of Oz. It's this beautiful place. And they go up and they ring the doorbell. And this gate guard opens a little hole in the door and he sticks his head out and he's angry at them. Because they didn't read the sign. And they say, what sign? And oh, he realizes there's no sign. He puts a sign out that says, bell out of order, please knock. <laughs> and then he shuts the little hole in the door. So then, so then they knock. He sticks his head out again and he asks them what they want. And they say, please, sir, we'd like to see the wizard. And the guard says, see the wizard? Nobody sees the wizard. Even I've never seen the wizard. And Dorothy responds, then how do you know there is one? Which I've always thought was an excellent question. We started this service like we start every Episcopal wedding by talking about the purposes of marriage, the purposes for which God instituted marriage. And it took us centuries to figure this out because for the longest time, we thought Christian marriage was only good for having children. And if you were Henry VIII, 
you had to have to have the right kind of child for it to be a legitimate marriage, or otherwise he thought it was no good, right? Well, we finally figured it out. We express it right here in our service that the first and primary reason that God instituted marriage was for your mutual joy. Imagine that. We worship a God who instituted this complicated thing called marriage first and foremost so you could have joy. The second reason, and we list it right here, the second reason that God instituted marriage was for the help that they can give each other in prosperity and adversity. That word help comes from the word ezer. It's a Hebrew word that really means partner. It means collaborator. And it comes from the second chapter of Genesis, the Adam and Eve story, when God says it's not good for the human being, and by the way, Adam means human being, not male human being. That's ish. Adam means the human being. It's not good for human beings to be alone. Let's create for him an easer. Now, in your English, it says helper, but the only other place that that word is used, it refers to God. I will lift mine eyes to the hill. From where is my easer to come? My easer is the Lord God. So it means collaborator. It means partner. It means mutual helper. And then the third reason is to have children and to nurture them in the love and knowledge of the Lord. I assume, although it's none of my business, that Sam and Catherine are through procreating. <laughs> <laughs> However, their nurture of their children, no matter how old they get and where they move off to, continues. And I assume that they are a help to one another because they've been doing this for 30 years and they're back here again to publicly commit and ask for you to witness and bless this, to commit to continue doing it until death do they part. And I assume that their life together gives them mutual joy. And the joy and the, and, the, and the help that you give each other are the gifts you can give to each other. But I believe that God had an ulterior motive in this marriage business beyond their joy and beyond the help they give each other and beyond even their children. And it goes back to the Wizard of Oz. The guard says nobody's ever seen the wizard. Dorothy says nobody's... How do you know there is one? Lauren just read, nobody's ever seen God. <laughs> or a dog. <laughs> so how do you know there is one? Well, John answers that question. God is love. Where there is love, that's right. If they can show us what love looks like, they can show us what God looks like. Because John says when we love each other, God lives within us. And we can show God. And so we said at the beginning of the service, and we'll say it again in a prayer, that what they do, their life together, is supposed to be a sign. It is supposed to signify to us the love that Christ has for us. Now, before Jesus came along and started using the Father as being the chief metaphor for God, right? Before he came along and did that and made that all popular, the prophets, their favorite metaphor for God and God's people was husband and wife. They used marriage, but they were trying to teach us something about faithfulness. They sort of missed the mark on all the love stuff. And so Jesus came along to show us what love looks like. What the love of God looks like. And a Christian marriage is supposed to be a sign of that love. It's supposed to signify to us that love. So it's an outward invisible sign of something deep and inward and spiritual, a means of grace. Now I assume they haven't always done it right. 
<laughs> and I assume that you're not going to do it right in the future. That's why in a minute we're going to pray that not if, but when they hurt each other, they'll have the grace to acknowledge their fault and seek forgiveness. And hopefully they'll extend forgiveness because that's a bedrock of the love of Christ. But I also assume that most of the time you get it right. And that most of the time you will get it right. And that's not a gift to each other. That's a gift to the rest of us. Because you, by the way you treat each other, by the way you love each other, by the mutual respect you show each other, by your mutual dependence, by your faithfulness, by your constancy, will show the rest of us what the love of Christ looks like. It is an outward invisible sign of this inward and very visible grace, and we call that a sacrament. And a sacrament is the means that all the rest of us receive grace. And I assume that since you're here after 30 years to recommit to this, that you will be that sacrament for us. And so Sam, Catherine, thank you. And for all the rest of us, thanks be to God. So Amen. 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 In the name of God. In the name of God. I say. I say. Take you, Catherine. Take you, Catherine. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have it to hold. Have and to hold from this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Here's your hand. Take his right hand in your right. <laughs> in the name of God. In the name of God. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> she cheated. She knows the words. <laughs> I did the same thing in the first She jumped the gun in the first one. She didn't want you to get away. Take your breath. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. <laughs> now that Catherine and Sam have given themselves to each other once again by solemn vows and with the joining of hands, I recognize that they are husband and wife. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the, of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. All right, go, everybody stand up now. <laughs> this is important because the reason we all stand is because you are joining me in these prayers and in the blessing when they kneel. So we are the Christian of all believers. We are the community who are praying for and blessing them together. So let us pray together in the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of 
all life, author of salvation and giver of all grace. Look with favor upon the world you have made and for which your son gave his life, and especially upon this man and this woman, whom you have made one flesh in holy matrimony. Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common life that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Amen. Amen. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will, and their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and peace with you and one another all the days of their life. Amen. Amen. Give them grace when they hurt each other, to recognize and acknowledge their fault, and to seek each other's forgiveness and yours. Amen. Amen. Make their life together a sign of Christ's love to this sinful and broken world that unity may overcome estrangement, forgiveness, heal guilt, and joy conquer despair. Amen. Give them such fulfillment of their mutual affection that they may reach out in love and concern for others. Amen. Amen. Grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows may find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. Amen. And grant that the bonds of our common humanity, by which all your children are united one to another and the living to the dead, may be so transformed by your grace that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, where, O oh Father, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign in perfect unity now and forever. Amen. <laughs> oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully, with his favor, look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace, that you may faithfully live together in this life, and in the age to come, have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.